Uh, can you hear me in the back okay? Okay, very good. I'm Cord Wisman, and I'm really glad that Jim Mitchell started off by talking about the galaxy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue on that theme. Who here in the audience remembers the first time you saw the Star Wars trilogy? Who remembers that? The, and I'm talking about the ones that they now call episodes four, five, and six. The one where you first met Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, Princess Leia, Darth Vader. You remember that one? And, and do you remember how you felt when you learned that Darth Vader was Luke's dad and he had gone over to the dark side? Well, that's my story as well. Because I used to be one of you on the bright side of consulting and academia. But then I went to the dark side of specialty contracting. And things look a little bit different over here. And I'm here to tell you a little about, a bit about that. Now, when I talk to my bright side friends on the bright side of consulting, they tell me that there is an evil shadow approaching, a shadow called commoditization. Who here has heard of this shadow? Who has experienced it? Who has battled it? And some of you, I know, have embraced it. Commoditization is a reaction to the market. The, the market is the market, and commoditization is merely a reaction to that. On the dark side, we know about this shadow. In fact, it is the bright side shadow that you cast upon us with your endless need for specification and needless competition, at least to us. On the dark side, we have figured out ways of combating this shadow. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about that. But before I tell you about that, I want to tell you a secret about us darksiders. You see, on the dark side, we wear costumes to hide our darkness. And the key ingredient of this costume is called the dress shirt. And I look upon you today, I see that there's lots of dark hearts amongst us. <laughs> now, a dress shirt is made by, uh, brought to us by many vendors and made by skilled workers in factories in places like Malaysia and Indonesia and Bangladesh. And they make these dress shirts that are all similar for these various vendors. And we purchase these dress shirts from these vendors. It is an event of great celebration because it's the vendor experience that makes it that way. Now, some of us on the dark side, we, we purchase these dress shirts from a vendor called Walmart. Now, perhaps you've heard of them. And Walmart gives us these dress shirts at a value proposition called always the lowest price because they give us the lowest price always. It is a great value proposition and one that we enjoy. And still others of us, we look for a little bit more and we purchase our dress shirts from places like Dillard's and Macy's. And it's more comfortable because they have carpeting. And at, and at Dillard's and, and Macy's, we pay a little bit more for those dress shirts for the carpeting. And, and, it's a, and it's a great thing. And some of us still require a more luxury. We go to a place called Joseph A. Bank. And we're always smiling because they give us three for the price of one. They greet us at the door. And they make us feel comfortable. And they make sure we have the right dress shirt size. And, and they send us out. We pay more for that experience because we feel pretty good about ourselves and we like it. What the dress shirt vendors is something that sometimes we don't know here in our own profession is that to battle the forces of commoditization, one must provide services that are differentiated. Differentiation is a reaction to a market. One cannot change the market. The market is the market. The market is like the tide. The market rises and falls as the market does. Differentiation is merely a, a reaction to that market. As I talk to my bright side friends on the bright side, and I ask them about this dark force that's approaching 
I hear whispers in hallways and at bars at late night and in elevators. A whisper is about a new drug that folks are experimenting with, a drug called innovation. And this is a drug that some of us on the dark side know quite well, and we have used it to great effect. And we on the dark side wonder if it can really truly be applied to you on the bright side and to get a feeling for that answer to that question, we start to think about our history. For our profession was spawned as a result of a great revolution, a revolution called the Industrial Revolution, a revolution that brought to us factories and power plants that led to the mass migration of people from green farms to gray cities, a revolution that tasked our bright side ancestors with many exciting tasks, like finding coal and extracting it, like bringing that coal in, in channels and canals, like Lilio talked about, right? cut through mountains. We had to work with cold new materials, steel and iron, to traverse rivers that we couldn't traverse before, to reach to the sky with our buildings. The revolution that is the Industrial Revolution led to the many innovations that occurred to us on the bright side and the dark side. As, as bright side hero, Carl Tuzaghi was unhinging his trap door, so too were dark siders inventing this special thing called the standard penetration test. A thing of such beauty and elegance, we still embrace it today. We cling to it. As, as it stands. We invented many things. We invented the pneumatic caisson. We invented the vibratory pile hammer. We invented vibrators to densify the ground, wicks to drain them. We invented the wave equation and the finite element method for solving everything. And we invented new materials like geosynthetics. And we saw the rise, my favorite rise, of the ground improvements. So we are an innovative profession after all. But as the forces of the Industrial Revolution fade with time behind us, so too did the number of problems, new unique problems that we have to solve as a result. We have solved these problems many times over and over again. They become interchangeable. And that indeed has led to the forces of commoditization. What you may not know or think about, but what we see that's rising behind you is a new change, a great change, a change that will be called a new revolution. It is a revolution, just like the revolutions of the past. For the tides of the Industrial Revolution are ebbing. The beach is running dry. There is a new way behind you, a tsunami. Run, run fast, because the forces of innovation are at your doorstep today. We have a new currency in our, in our economic environment, a currency called information. We have a new age, the information age, and that information will wreak havoc upon us. It already is. And therein lies the opportunity. We saw the beginnings of this new age start with the migration of our factory workers to strange places like India and China. Perhaps you've heard of them. And our factory workers eventually came back in the form of robots, tended to by American workers more skilled at, de at programming and debugging than they were at riveting and welding. The new revolution became apparent and becomes apparent when you purchase your new car. Purchase now more for its electronic displays than for the mechanical systems underneath. And this new revolution will bring great challenges to us. Our transportation systems and infrastructure, like Governor Rendell said this morning, will change. We live in an area where we will soon lose a personal owned vehicle to be replaced by pod cars teeming in our cities, hailed to us by our wristband apps. They will come to us. They will need to be stored in great parking garages at densities unheard of with column loads that are great. We will go from city to city in electric buses 
that are self-propelled and self-driven. They will require infrastructure that's defect-free and full of sensors for transportation and weather. Our deliverables will change to our clients and customers. No longer will it be acceptable to provide a SOA boring log. No, no, we will provide data that's spatially indexed, and not just indexed for space, but indexed also for quality, for what good is a piece of data on a consolidation test on a disturbed sample. And our deliverables in the terms of generic recommendations in our geotechnical reports will go away because our clients will soon be searching for their solutions the same way we do. They will use search engines, perhaps assisted by artificial intelligence. Just like we have given up our print libraries, or at least most of us have, for an innovation thing called Google. Our construction methods will change. They'll become globalized. And firms like ours will be selected for our systems based on past project likes rather than anything else. And our construction verification methods will also change. They'll become machine automated. Soil compaction will now be intelligent compaction, providing digitized, pixelized maps of the subsurface stiffness rather than individual discrete data points of density that's merely a correlation. So what are us geos to do is the question. And I submit to you that some of us will not change. We'll continue to offer in the same tired value proposition to the same set of questions that we had before ever more commoditized, pining for the days gone by, make geo great again, we might say. But there's others, others amongst us that will embrace these new changes, just like the Terzaghi's and the Pecks and the Mitchells before us. We'll seize these new opportunities. We'll solve problems that we didn't know we had to solve before. We'll provide great value. With that, my friends and heroes on the bright side, I salute you. So nice to be with you, and I hope that the bright side sun shines upon you. Thank you.